Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. Sam I.B. reporting for TheMediaSpeaks.com. Guys, speaking of The Media Speaks, we are going to have Kevin Blanche on The Media Speaks. It's going to be Saturday, May 11th, uh, 2 p.m. Now, I am in Ohio, so adjust your time accordingly. Kevin Blanche. The guy knows so much. He is proven. Proven. Like, not hypothesis. Proven. How cancer can be linked directly from things like the bomb testing in Nevada and uh, Chernobyl. And he is going to be an amazing guest. What I'm going to do is catch everybody up on where Fukushima is as of... 4.23 in the morning, 5.10.2013. It's May for you Lady Gaga fans. Um, listen, real quick, pause it, go get some popcorn, go get some pop. No, not pop, that's horrible. Get some vitamin water. Don't drink pop. Um, get a beer. This is going to be a long show, people, because I'm not going to rush through this. Here we go. For those of you that don't know, and I'm going to do it real quick, on March 11th, is that number again, 2011, an earthquake and a tidal wave destroyed the nuclear power plant Fukushima Daiichi. Four meltdowns, possible melt throughs. That means that uh, right here is the water that we all drink, the water table, and here's the ground. It, it might have went into the water table and now we're all drinking it. Uh, specifically all, by, I mean especially people in Japan, but we'll get to that later. When people tell you that Chernobyl was worth it, it's not. I mean, I, I don't want to give a ton of background here, but for, for people that watch the show, hit share and maybe haven't seen me before, I'm going to go ahead and uh, catch you up to date. So basically, it has already been statistically proven cancers are on the rise. Uh, sickness, death. Uh, it, it, again, let me stress this. For those of you that think it doesn't matter, you're going to die anyway. Yeah, it might kill you, but it's going to make you miserable. Everything from a cold that just won't go away, to a minor heart murmur, to uh, you know uh, some treatable cancer, uh, on sense of dementia, these things, kidney failure, failure, they are all related related to nuclear isotopes being released into the atmosphere. These things do not. I'm going to truncate this information a little. They don't leave for billions of years. That means you can ingest something as a child. It can make you sick your whole life. It can kill you, maybe many years early, maybe live to a ripe old age full of sickness. And then they can, worms can eat your body. Birds can eat the worms a hundred years later. And they'll be radioactive. That's not a joke. That's not an analogy. That is a matter of mathematical fact. Billions of years on some of these isotopes. So, uh, for, again, a crash course in what, uh, what nuclear, uh, nuclear elements can do to the body. Go watch the movie Silkwood. Now, this is where we are with this problem today. And we're going to catch ourselves up on... Uh, on Get, us, get ourselves ready for Kevin Blanche. Government reacts to Fukushima radiation crisis by raising the acceptable radiation standards instead of fixing anything. This is from Washington's blog. Two weeks after the Fukushima accident, we reported that the government responded to the nuclear accident by trying to raise acceptable radiation levels and pretending that radiation was good for us. <coughs> now, many of you are going to pick that idiot, uh, that, oh, what's her name? Uh, Republican, uh, I can't think what her name is. She was saying that uh, Giselle would know we talk about her all the time. Um, 
she was saying that their cancers were going to go down because of this, which is absolutely the boneheaded thing to say. However, it was the Obama administration that stopped testing our food for radioactivity after Fukushima happened because he didn't want to create a panic. So, hey, mothers, you fed your baby some radioactive milk because of Obama. Are you happy that you voted for him? Because no other president's ever done this before that I know of. Since then, massive radiation has been released on a daily basis from Fukushima for years. And there are so many new leaks that even the mainstream press is starting to admit that Fukushima was never fixed. They said it was in cold shutdown. It was not in cold shutdown. Fukushima radiation is showing up in fish on the west coast of the United States. Scientists are starting to sound the alarm as to the, as to the additional human deaths and health problems on the U.S. west coast due to Fukushima radiation and an epidemic of injuries to sea life, and I'll get to much of that later. However, the EPA director on Friday signed a revised version of the EPA's Protective Action Guide for Radiological Incidents, which critics say radically relaxes the safety guideline agencies follow in the wake of a nuclear reactor meltdown, dirty bomb attack, or other unexpected release of radiation. In a nutshell, what it's saying to you is when the levels become too high, we're just going to go ahead and say, well, you know, we used to say that one sievert was, uh, was dangerous for a child, but if, if we stick to one sievert, we're going to have to evacuate everybody, and that's going to cost us money, and we're going to have to, you know, shut down these nuclear power plants, and that's going to cost us money. So what we're going to do is say that 20 millisieverts is fine. And when the kids come down with cancer 20 years later, we'll say, well, it wasn't from us. Good luck trying to prove it. Good luck trying to sue. All the people that did it are dead or retired. Do you see? Now, Helen Collicott says something here, and I'll be the first one to say that Helen Collicott, uh, politically, is a nutcase. But when it comes to radiation uh, facts, there is none better. Her and Busby. The radiation guidelines called Protective Action Guides, or PAGs, allow cleanup companies many times more lax than anything the EPA has ever accepted. These guidelines govern evacuation, shelter-in-place orders, food restrictions, and other actions following a wide range of radiological emergencies. It also says, I'm going to read what's highlighted here. Resolves an international fight inside the APA between nuclear versus public health specialists in favor of the nuclear. In other words, the nuclear industry to keep running is not willing. They are now poisoning everyone. Your food's not tested. If you're still eating fish, if you're eating anything from California, California raisins, and maybe, you're, maybe in your cereal, you're poisoning yourself. Do you understand me? You're poisoning yourself. Look up these things. There is no safe level of radiation. When they say that, when you hear that, know right away that you're being lied to. Know to avoid whatever it is that they're saying is safe. I promise you on a stack of Bibles, people, please listen to me. This is medical fact long before I'm mentioning it. I'm doing this because this really matters. Study, Fukushima radiation fallout has devastated the health of U.S. babies on West Coast and in other areas. Natural news. <coughs> Jonathan Benson writes, New peer-reviewed research published in the, uh, in the Open Journal of Pediatrics raises fresh concerns about the health effects of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear disaster on American children and babies. As has long been suspected by those with an understanding of the widespread reach of radioactive fallout from Fukushima, newborns living in California, Hawaii, Washington, and other West Coast states appear to have been directly affected by Fukushima fallout in a serious way, which is reflected by the disappropriate rate of hyperthyroidism observed among the demographic. Hyperthyroidism is a sign that you have what is very likely going to lead to cancer in your thyroid. That is what that means. 2,110% um, <clears throat> increase in iodine-131. That is a nuclear, uh, 
a nuclear poison, a nuclear element. 2,110% increase in iodine-131 on the West Coast following Fukushima linked to hyperthyroidism. Each of these states and the Pacific Ocean, according to the study, experiencing significantly elevated levels of radioactive iodine-131, as well as various other radioactive isotopes, all of which are deadly, all of them. In the days and weeks following the March 11, 2000 disaster, based on data, the 2,110% increase in detectable I-31 all along the U.S. West Coast following the disaster appears to be directly correlated with a higher than average rates of congenital hyperthyroidism. These are the signs. I've been saying since this thing went red, ask Giselle, ask D-Lake, ask Court. They are people that I care about who live out there. Move. Move. And if that pisses you off, then take it out on GE, who did this to us. That's who TAPCO is. You hearing me now? You can't live on the West Coast anymore. You can't live in Hawaii. If you do, you are hurting your family. That is what they did to us. It's, it's not something you can just wish away. It is fact. If you live there, you are screwing yourself. And this, this hyperthyroid problem is the beginning of it. It's the beginning of it. There's heart problems, all kinds of things going on. And they're, they're starting in low, you know, little bits. It's hyperthyroidism. It's not cancer. You don't just wake up one day with cancer. There are steps. There are illnesses. There is misery. That is what GE has brought to us. Dead sea lions washing on shore in California appear to have died from radiation poisoning. P.F. Lewis, Natural News. An unusual surge of standard, of stranded, excuse me, dying and dead sea lions, seals, have littered Southern California beaches from Santa Barbara to San Diego since earlier this year. Most of the area newspapers and media outlets have been alarmingly reporting this unusual phenomenon. It's unusual because this is the season, excuse me, when sea lion pups flourish. Instead, they're struggling ashore in starved, emaciated conditions if they manage to stay alive at all. Scientists say almost half of the sea lions born this past winter have died. Of course, that doesn't matter. And it doesn't matter that the bats are dying all over the place in uh, Pennsylvania that I report about, or that we're running out of bees, even though I think it was Einstein that said, when the bees die, die, so do we. How radiation could be primarily a, 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 be the primary casual event? Japanese marine scientists have announced extremely high radiation readings in seawater collected off Japan. New York Times article, Fukushima's Contamination Produces Some Surprises at Sea, published on September 28th of 11, and it was not a surprise to anyone with a brain bigger than a pumpkin seed, contained information from scientists about extremely high amounts of radioactive cesium-137. Oh, we just had iodine, now we got cesium. Are you understanding, people? It's everywhere. Why are they coming to shore starved? Because the fish are dying of the radiation poisoning and there's not enough to eat. Why are they showing up dying? Because when they do find food, they just ate radioactive fish. Of course, your fish, oh, they're safe, right? It's a different fish. Don't eat fish. If you do, make sure it's from a private fishery, I would say. The extremely high readings recorded at different times indicated that cesium-137 was rising, and at the time in 2011, more radioactive material was continuing to leak into the ocean. And, of course, what did I just say at the beginning of this? It never goes away. A billions of years, that never goes away. So now we have a 2011 report that says from researchers at the Tokyo University of Marine Science and Technology, which stated that Fukushima's radioactive one cesium-137 has contaminated ocean plankton. Plankton is the first food within the marine life food chain. The very first thing eaten by the smallest of things. Plankton is poisonous. And then it concentrates. Uh, for you uh, top 40 fans, that means it builds up and builds up. It never goes away. You don't, you don't ingest some cesium and then it's gone. So when you ingest some more cesium, you're fine. It builds up. And they create little tiny, uh, for lack of better words, explosions in your body. And when one of these hit a cell, the cell, uh, the cell becomes 
dis designed, if you will. It doesn't know when to die. It, it, it mutates, and then it splits at some point and mutates again and mutates again. There's a word for that. That word is cancer. Speaking of which, do me a favor and make sure you check out uh, Dana Mobley Christ, D-A-N-E-A, -E uh, the charity connection, uh, someone who has done much for sick people with cancer, and now she herself has it, so make sure you check her out and help her. I'm doing a DJ-a-thon for her the last weekend of May. Uh, CommonDreams.org, Fukushima cleanup will last more than 40 years, says Nuclear Watchdog. At first, it was going to be 10 to 25 years, then it was 30. Now, over 40 years, this is still spewing poison into the air with no end in sight. And this is what we get. The operator of Japan's crippled Fukushima nuclear power plant must get its act together and stabilize the plant's essential systems. The, internal, the International Atomic Energy Agency urged on Monday, saying that it will likely take more than the 40 years to properly decommission the site. It goes on to say, and I'll let you look it up, I just told you where it was. It goes on to say that there are technologies they need to move the radioactive spent fuel that weighs tons that they don't even have yet. It's not a matter of lifting it. You can't just lift it and put it somewhere else. That releases unspeakable amounts of radioactivity into the air and would probably kill everybody in Fukushima if you did it wrong. They don't even have the technology to do this. So when they say 40 years, they're hoping that they can even invent this stuff. Hopefully, if technology keeps going the way it is and nothing else horrible happens, it'll be 40 years. That is what they're saying. Now, how many of you have ever heard uh, a major corporation give an actual timeline and then it's there? It's, it actually works. Uh, Cedar Point, even. It's an amusement park near me. This year, the gatekeeper is supposed to open Saturday. I have seen their main coaster not be there. The new ride, I've seen it not be there on opening day. Why? Because things happen. Okay, things. I didn't say what... I want to. Things happen. Kevin Blanche would say it. Um, that's, that's the upside, people. I mean, if you can't even guarantee that a roller coaster will be there on opening day, what about a melted-down nuclear power plant? On natural news, massive uncontained leak at Fukushima is pouring over 710 billion becquerels of radioactive materials into the atmosphere. Um, people, if my, if my camera cuts out, I'll make a part two to this. I didn't charge the battery long enough. Um, a becquerel is... I'm going to explain this as best I can. Kevin might be able to do a better job. But a becquerel is a reaction, uh, an explosion that happens in one second. Per second. A becquerel, one reaction. 710 billion becquerels of radioactive material into the atmosphere. 710 billion reactions a second! Each of those reactions can cause the mutation in the cancer that I told you about. Are you upset yet? Are you upset enough to do more than just sit there and watch this and actually try to stop nuclear power plants from operating? Don't give me global warming. This is far worse than anything a coal plant's going to do. I'm not saying coal is healthy. It's better than this. Drill, baby, drill. The oil. The tsunami caused nuclear accident at Fukushima Power Station in Japan is the disaster that never ends. That is exactly true. As new reports indicate that a wealth of new radioactive materials have spewed into the atmosphere. According to Singapore-based news outlet Asia One, the Tokyo Electric Power Company, TEPCO, that's GE, which owns the multi-nuclear reactor power station at Fukushima, announced April 6th that some 120 tons of water that had been contaminated with radioactive substances had leaked into an underground storage facility at the number one atomic power plant site. Keep in mind, entire cooling units have been shut down because of rodents getting into the wiring system. That's what we're talking about here. That's how on the brink they are. Um, they're running out of room to store all of this is the problem. So Asia One reported that water samples taken by TEPCO from soil surrounding the damaged facility a few days later showed 35 becquerels per cubic centimeter of radioactive substances, which is abnormal. Safe levels, we've already gone over that now, haven't we? Safe levels 
of Becquerel's is 300 per kilogram of water. This was 35 Becquerel's per cubic centimeter. However, TEPCO officials did not publicly announce their findings right away after not finding any unusual changes in water quality data, such as chloride concentration. And it says here, it's the disaster that just keeps on giving. I want to read this. TEPCO said earlier this month it expected the water transfer would take about five days to complete. Uh, they're running out of places to store it, is what it is. And the equipment is breaking down. It's so radioactive that they can't even film it without it destroying the cameras or the recording equipment. And if you don't think that nuclear is a huge problem, if you don't think that all these nuclear power plants need to go the way of the dinosaur, then I'm going to end with something that might just wake you up. MLive.com, uh, Michigan Live. A radioactive water was released into Lake Michigan before Palisades nuclear power plant shut down Sunday. Uh, this is dated May 6th, um, 2013. Lake Michigan... I, I, I know I got a lot of top 40 fans here. Do you listen to Usher and Rihanna and Kesha and Justin Timberlake? Okay, let me, let me help you here. Lake Michigan is in the United States. Now, now you're with me. Covert Township, uh, Michigan. Before Sunday's shutdown of Palisades and nuclear power plant, about 79 gallons of diluted radioactive water were released into Lake Michigan. The Nuclear Regulatory Commission said Monday, May 6th. But by the time the water reached the lake, the levels of radioactivity had been diluted to the point where it did not represent a health or safety risk, a spokesman for the NRC said. Here's what they do, and I'm going to teach you this trick. I'm going to teach you how they do it. Hopefully my camera won't die. It goes into the water. So the theory is that if you take a little tiny bit of sand and put it in a great big two liter of pop, if you drink it, you're not going to taste the sand. It's going to be almost undetectable to the naked eye. Well, on a very small level, that's what they're saying here. Well, do you know why that's not true? Because it sinks. And again, if you drink some lake water, it's not going to hurt you, probably. Not, not at these levels. Or Fukushima, I never know, but not these levels. However, the plankton gets infected. And then the fish in Lake Michigan eat the... Plankton. And the bigger fish eat them, and the bigger fin, and soon we're eating radioactive fish that is not safe by any standards at all. That is how they do this. That's how they can get away with this because everyone's asleep at the wheel and nobody cares. If you're still listening to this, leave a comment. I want to see how many people really care about their health. Just say I'm still listening. There is no danger to the public. It did occur. It was not anything to be alarmed about, said NRC's Victoria Mittling. Well, why don't you, why don't you call Miss Mittling and let her know what uh, you learned at the correct views. Palisades does plan to releases of diluted radioactive water into the lake at regular intervals. People in Michigan, what the hell is wrong with you? You allow this to happen? Are you, are you that stupid? Over the weekend, the water which leaked from a 300,000 gallon storage tank went down a drain into a basin where the where what Mitt Lake characterized as an extreme dilution factor occurred. Yeah, until it settles into the plankton and the fish eat the plankton and we all freaking die! I don't know what else I can say, people. Nuclear power is the worst idea ever. Fukushima is the first time that man has ever created a disaster of which they have no control for. At least they contained for the time being Chernobyl. Um, there are areas, you know, in Mavic in Russia that will never be inhabitable again, but nothing like Fukushima. And it's still melting down. It's happening now. What you can do is you can insist and do everything in your power, which is what I clearly do, to end nuclear. If you're in a mutual fund and General Electric is in it, change your mutual fund, go to infrastructure. Um, invest in gold, do whatever you have to do. Don't fund these people. Make them shut these plants down. You are listening to the correct views. Thank you for doing so. Please go to themediaspeaks.com, look up the work of Kyle Court, D. Lake, and myself, and get ready for Kevin Blanche.
2 p.m. again in Ohio. 2 p.m. Saturday. Good night, friends. God bless. Please donate if you can.